現在トップは鉄拳2番星野和義5周目を走行中Hi, I'm Aimu. I'm Iwasa from Japan. Iwasa Aimu. Hi, I'm Aimu. Born in Osaka, Japan on 22nd September 2001, Aimu started his cutting all the way from he was 4 years old. His noble campaign were winning the 2014 Suzuka Karting Championship, Yamaha SS Class, and Suzuka Karting Championship X30 Class. But his first race was in 2017 in Asian Formula Rail Series, but only took part in two races. In that round alone, he only takes two pole positions, a fast lap, and managed to clinch two second places. Not bad result, if you ask me, for a rookie. And he also raced in Formula 4 Japan, raced with BMX for one round in November that year as well. But the result was mid. Literally mid. Nothing like his pick. This one, no picks at all. He returns to Formula 4 for the next season, where the lineup of these unknown Japanese drivers make their name famous for the next four years. The likes of Yuki Tsunoda, Tepe Natori, uh, Kasekoto Kotaka, and Ren Sato. He raced with RN Sports, but only for one round again. But this time, the result is more decent. Managed to get 6th place in the first race and there's that crash, which leads him with 17th place in the standings. Also, he raced in JF Form 4 Suzuka final round, which he managed to clinch 3rd place. You're probably wondering why he hasn't had a full season before 2020. There's no clear explanation from Ayumu himself. But actually, he did compete in Super FJ in 2019. The series itself is so random for you. Obviously, there's no Wikipedia page. Also, nothing in driver's database, and that makes PostGP a little bit more relevant. And here's the car specification for those who want to know about the car and the series itself. Take a look. Post all you want and read it. In that year as well, he takes the chance to do SRS Formula Scholar style. So probably wonder, what is this SRS Formula Scholarship? We have to know what is. SRS formula, the Suzuka Circuit Racing School formula is like a school, where teaches top level driving skills and knowledge to young and upcoming drivers who aim to become world class drivers, has a curriculum in 4 steps so they can aim for the top more efficiently. Couple of these drivers takes the trial and only one winner can get backing from Honda and compete in Formula 4, previous winners like Ukiyo Sahara near Fukuzumi and then Yuki Tsunoda. Ayumu Iwasa wins ahead from Yuri Kimura, Sean Koide, Riki Okusa. Now, the SRS formula renamed as the Honda Racing School or HRS. Racing service. In 2020, he competed outside Japan in French Formula 4, where he's backed by Honda. The grid consists of Isaac Hatchar, Semi Megan Tunif, and Ayumu's compatriot from Japan, Ren Sato, 2019 FIA Formula 4 Japan champion. For the title contender at that time was Isaac Hatchar and Ren Sato. Like I said before, he was the Formula 4 Japan champion. Ayumu Iwasa, surprisingly, on domination that season. Ayumu claimed whooping off 9 wins, 5 poles, 7 fastest laps, and then a total of 15 podiums. He also scored a lot of points on every race. That's a good achievement for him. And believe it or not, he didn't reach top 5 for one race, and he only reached 6th place. Unfortunate for Ren Sato, his European career is over. Because he didn't claim the title, the loser to Ayumu Iwasa, a fellow countryman and hunter driver, he going back to Japan and competed in Super Formula Light. While as Isaac Hajar only managed to get third 
place and competes in Freca for the next season. A new Miss European career continues. After he won the French Formula 4, he gets a Renault Sports Academy backing as the winning prize, and they rebranded as Alpine Academy in 2021. But he's a Honda driver, which has some relations to Red Bull Formula 1 team, obviously, which he has to forfeit the winning prize. That's a good decision, because in another series, compatriot Yuki Tsunoda claimed third place in Formula 2 where his destination is very clear, Formula 1. So there's a vacant place of Red Bull Honda Drivers Academy, where in the end, Ayumu fills in. For 2021, Ayumu competes first in the Winter Series form of Formula 3 Asian Championship, racing with high tech and his teammate likes of Rizu Sijima, Roman Stanek, and Roini Sani. Hi, I'm Roini Sani from Israel. And the campaign was meh, only one podium, which is from a penalty, but he consistently scoring points, place him at 8th place. Now for his main campaign to compete in Formula 3, with the same team of high tech along with Formula 3 Asian teammate Stanek and ADEC form for runners up fellow Red Bull Junior driver Jack Crawford. Crawford had big expectations along with Johnny Edgar, who won ADEC Formula 4. But Edgar was in a call-in, so we have to rule him out out of contention. He was just there for the vibes. Not many thought he will do well. But people forget that Dennis Hogger won the Italian Formula 4. Struggled badly in the high-tech in his rookie year after a stellar Formula 4 season he had. Now we're going into Ayumu's Formula 3 season in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Painful, isn't it? Especially with that fraudulence of that season, you know, with that long gap and three races in a weekend. Yeah, that fraudulence. But believe it or not, Ayumu is the highest Red Bull driver in the standings. As expected, Edgar struggles a lot in that column, while Crawford just struggled like Holger last season. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Holger, he won the title though, as a Red Bull junior, right? Not exactly. Holger and Jack won, part of Red Bull, but just demoted to Red Bull Super Driver. So that's not valid. And with that, Ayumu Iwasa was the best Red Bull Junior driver. He claimed one win, that's from a long ban, and two podiums in total, reached 12 in the standings. So the most sensible step for Ayumu is to continue Formula 3 and compete for the top 3 for 2022 season, right? <laughs> Wrong! No, he goes to Formula 2 with Dams. That's a big step for him. He's already struggled-ish in Formula 3 and likely will be the same in Formula 2 in a Dams car. This risky move is solely from Honda itself rather than Red Bull, believe it or not. Have you seen the pattern? Ayumu moved from French Formula 4 to Formula 3. That is a big gap because not a lot of drivers do that move since Giuliano Lessi from French Formula 4 to GP3, and that is in 2016. Same like Yuki Tsunoda, his progress to Formula 1 is quick, where he only had two racing years in Europe. So it's another massive gamble from Honda. Will he end up like Yuki Tsunoda, who did well, reach Formula 1, or Nirai Fukuzumi, who struggled because he's in an ardent in decline in 2018? And now for this year, we'll have 5 Red Bull drivers in the 2022 Formula 2 rosters. Gian Durvala on his third season trying to clinch the top 3 spot, that is Hogger, promoted back to the jury team on charge. 
both in a prema, and that's a massive challenge. While Liam Lawson moves to Colin to solidify his 40 out to reach Formula 1, and Yuri Vips stay with high tech, who surely is one step away from to be a Formula 1 driver for next season. Oh my god. But... <laughs> Wrong! And Ayumu Iwasa just there, adding the numbers, and we don't have high expectation with Ayumu, especially he's in a dams where the team is on a decline for the previous two years. He's team up with Roy Nisani. Ayu, how are you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> And before start of the season, Shopik takes the ring of the Dams team, and changes could be seen in the future ahead. Now, what is Ayumu's target for this season? I want to get to uh, top three in the championship. That is my my aim at the moment. That's right. Top three is the aim. Laugh all you want, but lucky I have trust in his confidence. <laughs> Now we're going to round by round to explain where is Ayumu's position towards his future. Started off with Bahrain where he spins in the warm-up lap in the quali. Into the first minute. And that puts him dead last for the two races in Bahrain. People laugh at his previous target claim and that makes Ayumu look silly. Now sprint race. He had the race nobody thought he would do, and that is climb from P22 to P8, climb 14 paces, and that climb up shows what will he do in this season. And for the future race, he did this. Same like in the sprint race, he did much better. Before the last lap, he should be in P7 or P8, but no, he'd been mega cramped put him that stone last. Now from Jeddah to Barcelona, he shows some raw speed, uncovers some of his potential, and the result is good by taking second place in Colin Imola and runs up in the sprint race in Barcelona. From that three rounds itself, he claimed 27 points. More than Yuri Vips, Margaret Armstrong, Dennis Hogger, Liam Lawson, and Frederick Festi. And he could do more if it wasn't for this awful double stack and unfortunate hit and Ayumu had a mare in Monaco many penalties from Monaco itself due to his mistakes and just led up to Baku which him only able to do rank of one point only then for the next two runs in Silverstone and Red Bull Ring he only managed to claim 14 points with another second place sprint race in Silverstone where he almost win it from Duhan. Also, seventh place from the Havoc of Spielberg. But that's not enough as he's outscored by freaking Enzo Piripaldi, who just being lucky in the right time at the right place. That's awful four runs for Ayumu, way into 13th place in the standings. Life is unfair where Enzo Piripaldi is enjoying it in fifth place. I did it! I beat the Dinklebergs! I mean, you beat the Dinklebergs! Now, Ayumu need to forget that and move on as he returns to France. Starting with the qualifying, where he's on pole! Oh my god! No, Logan took the pole by this much. That's just mean, Logan. Well, the sprint race wasn't that too noticeable, but he managed to climb up 6th place after some penalties. But, in the end, the feature is, is his highlights of the season at the moment, where he dominates after Logan's slow start and passing Jackie O'Duhan on the first lap, he cement his first win and no hassle from the back because there's some problems from the back. And that win is satisfying for me, in turn, and most of Japanese fans who follows Ayumu and Formula 2. And that shows what he can do, and his claim doesn't seem to delude it, actually. You all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? Then, the Hungarian GP, where he dominates in quali and gets his maiden pole ahead of Armstrong. The sprint race managed to get one point, and the feature race is just unfortunate for him. At least he managed to be on the podium on the third place. A point is a point, and podium is a podium. 
So for Ayumu's result this season, after the Hungarian Grand Prix, he already claimed 1 win, pole position, fast lap, and total of 4 podiums, with 90 points in 7th place. So, what can we take from Ayumu's performance this season? And that is, he did well, quick, and he's more mature than before and after he changed his driving style from Formula 3 to Formula 2, it pays off. Now, can he go to Formula 1 by 2023? Well, even though he, if he achieved top 3, the answer is a big no. That's because Red Bull has learned the lesson. Don't be like Yuki Tsunoda because he was too rushed when he go to Formula 1 without Formula 1 experience beforehand. But it doesn't mean he's not a Formula 1 quality. Let's say if next season given the North chance in Formula 2 and achieving number 1, then it's a worthy inclusion to Formula 1 2024-25, depends on the year. But I don't see him going to Formula 2 next season. As a potential could go back to Japan racing in Super Formula. Well, it do need to replace that one Red Bull driver, but I forgot who's that name. I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Whether it be in Japan or Europe, at least we already know that Ayumu has a good future ahead of him. And surely, he'll be remembered by most fans in the end. Konobangumi wa